Hi, I'm Ray from Jill Tech and welcome to the fourth tutorial in our series covering production techniques in Ableton. Now on our last tutorial there we covered basic storage and compression so so this time I'm gonna go uh, go a little deeper into things and uh, get a little bit more creative and show you just just how uh, just a creative uh, technique, soy chaining can be in music production. So I'll just start here where you left off in the last tutorial. Give it a play. That's the basic groove. Um, <clears throat> we put soy chain here on uh, a few different things. The hot bus for warm. So give that a play. That's the soy chaining. That's the soy chain. Now. So you can hear it's it's giving a nice groove. And let's pop to the sound. Uh, and for the side chain, we're using a duplicate of um, of the kick drum. Uh, we're calling it a trigger, and we have it going to to sounds only. Uh, I'll solo that. As you can see, you can't hear the sound. But if I go down to the to the side chain here, you can see the signal. It is being picked up. So. Uh, that means uh, we're not getting two kicks on top of each other, um, interfering with each other. So uh, it's a good way of doing it there. But um, see, if we side chain off the tracks kick, it brings a few problems and uh, it limits us in a lot of ways. For instance, if we get to a breakdown on a track, we want to take the kick out, but we may want to keep a few things side chaining, like maybe a loop or two or a pad maybe. Uh, this this becomes impossible if the kick that we're sourcing from is no longer in the track, so everything's gonna come back in together on on top of each other. So um, so we're just gonna we're just gonna uh work or, work around that, and uh, I'll show you here uh how to uh how to address that problem. So um, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna delete the previous trigger here. Um, there we go. I'm not gonna create another audio channel in its place. So control and T gonna, gonna give the same name, the trigger. And um I'll just colour dark there. And um for this for this metal of side chain I'm gonna need a wild sample of the kick drum. Uh, the kick drum from the track. So there's two ways of doing this. Well there's, there's various ways of doing this, but I'm gonna show you two here. So um First instance, I'm just going to um, create an audio channel here. So, Control T, uh, I'm going to take audio from that's resampling and I'm going to hit record. Now, I saw the kick group there. Basically, this method resampling here is uh, when I press record here, it's going to record what you're hearing, what what is being played. So, this instance, the kick is soloed, so that's what you're going to hear. So, that's going to what's going to record. If I was to play, the track in its entirety there you will it would record all that into an uh, into an audio sample so uh so i'm just gonna hit record there go down here as you can see it's recording the kick so stop that there go into it and i'll get a bar loop out of it now if i right click on the actual scene here um and crop Clip that was crop the selected area. So there we go, four kick uh, loop here, uh, covering one bar. So um, I'm gonna drag this over the trigger, and we can now delete this channel. And uh, another way of doing it as well is if I get my kick kick sample here. Sorry, I'm gonna kick sample here. Go into the arrange and view. Go to the start here. And if I drag this in, I'll drag it into the trigger channel because it is an audio channel, so it will take it. Let's stretch that out. As you can see, it's just under the quarter bar there. So if I highlight this whole area, then right click and consolidate, that'll stretch out the stretch it out to a quarter bar. So if I it's now highlighted, so if I click Control D for duplicate. There we go, I've got, I've got my four kicks, so the same as before, highlight it, right click, consolidate, there we go, so I'll just drag that back into the session view here, and there we go, so two 
with two uh, with two samples here of our, of our kicks. So like before, I'm gonna go audio to sends only. So I'll solo that, and you'll hear nothing. Audio to master, you'll hear something. So there you go. Right. So like before, I'm gonna go I'm gonna go into my side chain. So I'll go to the half bus first. I will audio from. I click trigger and solo that. Solve that group and let's see where we are. Yeah. So I'm moving the threshold down and you can hear the side chains there. I'll take it off. There we go. So as you can see it is it's doing the same job as before. Um and I'll I'll also do the same on the percussion group here. Alright, and we should get similar similar results. There we go. Now I'm just gonna I'm gonna add something new to the track here. I'm gonna add in a roid. Um, I'm gonna get this off the drum rack. Uh, using roids, that's a good way of demonstrating soy chain. Usually roids uh, to get them to get a nice groove on. You, you do have to tweak around the soy chain a bit. So uh, it's a good way. It's a good way of demonstrating. So I'll just uh, add a mini channel here because the drum rack is an instrument. So control shift and T. There we go. Midi channel there. Go on drum rack, yeah, into my symbols, go down to the end, there we go. Roid 909. It's a very famous, very famous sounds used in numerous tracks, including most of our own. It's, it's a very nice sound. I'll just double click here and I'll draw it in. Right, that was solo that. I play. There we have it. And I'll, if I just solo the kick as well, so we'll hold control on doing that, so it'll allow the two to be soloed at the same time. And play. You can hear it's right on top of the kick, it doesn't sound good. So, to fix that, I'll go into my audio effects. I'll drag my audio effect rack in. Now, in our second tutorial, we, um, we went over the audio effect rack. Uh, this as the default uh, preset on it, it's a compressor, EQ8, really some simple delay, which won't be necessary in this channel, but they're nice to have in any way. Uh, spectrum, handy to have, uh, getting key the key, for instance, of your sound, and limit at the end, always good to have that. So, um, yeah, so go into my compressor here, <laughs> click on the side chain, audio from, and trigger, and I'll just solve this on its own. And now I should mention as well, we use the FF1 setting on the compressor. The default one is FF2. We find that does give a lot of clipping um, with your sound. So uh, we, we find with FF1 is, is a lot more useful. So uh, have your attack down and mess with your release on thresholds until you get that. Make sure you get that good pop and good groove. So uh, I'll just solve that with the kick there. So control and that's the whole lot to carry there. Right. So I'll just demonstrate now with the kick. I'm going to move the kick down and I'm going to play the scene without the kick. Uh, just to show that. It, uh, it will still soy chain without the kick playing. You'll have to trigger slightly uh, doing its job. So that's the trigger doing its job there. I'll take the trigger out now. And there we go. Um, so that's that problem sorted. Uh, which means on breakdowns you can if you want you can you can have stuff uh, you can also side chaining and the the way of doing that is in the arrangement view if oh, I'll see this here arrangement view if so I drag my trigger in like so I'll just drag my right in now for instance I'm gonna see a little bit from that sorry it's in the wrong shot 
So I play for a bar and it was sidechain and then if I choose to delete it um the sidechain will stop so as you can see there let's drag it back in there we go so when you arrange your track uh if you have your trigger channel you can just drag this across the whole track that you want to be side chaining and maybe there's parts that you don't want to side chain just keep it just keep it free so uh so we go back in here now and um we can also we can also deal with uh you may want a different you may want a different pattern on your side chain for instance you may want a double kick at the end or uh i don't know so we can uh we can drag out i'll just delete this here we can drag out the sample in here I'll zoom in on it and there we go let's double kick at the end so I'll just drag this in. Okay, so I'll just consolidate that. Yeah, there we go. Drag it in here. So there we go. I'll just I'll just get that a play now. I'll just solve the roid and it'll be a different pattern to the side chain now. So see, just put that on the loop. There we go. So there we go. Now this won't work with a lot of stuff, but you can be creative. You can you can see put the, into the envelope here. Have your volume. You can mess with volumes. You can maybe bring down your second kick and your last one maybe, and uh, just give that a play. There you go. It's it's. It's an option you can have anyway. So, uh, so I'll just bring the kick back in here. I'll drag this down. I'll bring the bring the straight side chain back in. And uh, just another thing we can do here: we can drag an auto filter onto our trigger. I'll give it a low cut. Now, if I send this to master, so you'll hear the actual trigger. So I'll give this a play. Now we see when we start messing with the low cut it makes the actual side chain smaller. It makes the actual hit smaller, so it'll make the side chain a lot tighter. So if I go into into my happles for instance, solo it and play it. Go to my trigger here. As you can see, when I'm messing with the frequency of it, it's affecting the side chain. So, it's just if you want a tight, smart side chain, you can maybe mess with the low, the low cuff uh, setting on your auto filter there. So, um, so there we go. Yes, yeah, that's covered uh, pretty much most of uh, of we wanted to there today. So. Um, any questions on this, uh, you'll, see our, you'll see our email address at the end of the video. So, uh, yeah, thanks for listening and uh, chat soon.